continue the series of Dafyomi friends over here is what a Gemara of Bava Batra looks like over here. It's huge because this is the biggest tractate in the whole of the Gemara, respectively, 176 pages. And friends, we are now on page 28. That's naturally in Hebrew, we call that Chaf Chet. And it's very, very interesting. We're talking all about Chazakas or strengthenings of the three things when something happens three times in these pages over the next course of the days as we're talking about. We're once again, fantastic notes from Robert Adin Stein's house, which I very much recommend to uh, look, explore the current set of Gomorrahs over here. So it's actually interesting that according to Jewish law, just because someone has possession of property and lives or works it, he cannot claim ownership of it. That in it of itself is not enough to claim ownership to that. A person only becomes an owner if he receives that status from the original owner through, let's say, a sale or by receiving it as a present or if he claims an object that is hefka. Naturally, hefka in English, we call that ownerless. Performing a formal act of possession is something called a kinyan, which we've spoken about many times before. Thus, there can be no claim of ownership based on the idea of squatters' rights. You know, many of the people we've heard of the stories where the squatters came in and then uh, tried to take over everything else. And if someone else comes with proof of ownership, the person living or working the land will now, at this stage in time, have to prove himself that he bought it over here. The halakha, the law, Jewish law recognizes that a person cannot be expected to retain purchase documents forever. So if the person working the land can show that he has been in possession of the land for an extended period of time, working it with the original owner's knowledge, that will be to some degree an acceptable proof of purchase. Over here. I believe in Perik Cheskatabatim, which is the third chapter in Mesech Kama, which this actually starts in today's page here on page 28. It discusses what the different kinds of evidences, the different kinds of proofs to this is, or as we call it, chazakot. That's another word that we could use, or strengthening, which we call in English. How long a person must have been in possession of this specific item in order to make his claim of a chazaka? What users constitute possession? Whether, does this differ uh, when applied to different objects and so on and so forth over here? There's a great commentator, a halakhic commentator of the name, the Ritva. And he points out that the term chazaka, as it's used in the specific context, is qualitatively different than the chazaka used as a kinyan, as an acquisition itself. In taking possession of an object, he comes to argue on this that in our case, we aren't necessarily uh, worried, concerned with proof of ownership. While in the case where we're talking about Kinyan, we need a formal act that creates the ownership itself. The great rabbis, geniuses, the Geonim, see a single meaning for the term Chazaka. Holding or having possession of the object in a way that shows ownership of it. The Chazaka is applied differently in these two different cases over here, so it's very, very interesting. We're learning all about Chazaka. Tomorrow's Duffy on page 29, we're going to talk about uh, the different rabbis, what constitutes uh, Chazaka and what's the science behind a Chazaka in itself. But this was very interesting insight from Rabbi Adin Science Out. Friends, I would like to dedicate this Lilunishmat for Avihu Ben Esther, who sadly passed away nearly two months ago. Please uh, do good acts of deeds in his memory. And uh, wishing you all a great day, please. We've done 28 videos, or 27 videos already, here in Masechet Vavatra already. Please watch over all the previous videos. And uh, wishing you all a great day, and keep watching the videos.